Why run a game slowly at a high resolution when you can instead run it faster on a low resolution that closely imitates the look of a higher one? That's the idea behind upscaling. Nvidia uses DLSS and AMD uses FSR, and the game Necromunda Hired Gun is one of the first games to feature both, which is really exciting because now we can finally compare these two different upscaling methods directly in the same scenarios. DLSS is the more intelligent upscaling method. It renders at a lower resolution, then builds the image up over many, many frames, and then makes extensive use of motion vectors to try and keep it all in the right place should there be any motion. However, it requires a lot of work to be added to a game, and only GeForce RTX cards are allowed to use it. FSR is AMD's answer to DLSS. Much like DLSS, it uses a lower resolution image, but unlike DLSS, it doesn't use motion vectors or anything like that. It instead uses a nicely calibrated stretch effect to keep the image as sharp, yet as smooth as possible. You can see how it compares with other stretch effects here. In the process, it does act sort of like anti-aliasing as well. Those edges look a lot smoother than natives are. But as you'll see later on in the comparison shots for this game, it retains some of the weaknesses of temporal anti-aliasing, which is presumably because that's being applied to the screen before FSR then upscales it. So while its workings aren't as advanced as DLSS may be, the benefits are that it's very easy to add to any game, and that anybody with a semi-modern graphics card can use it. So both have their place, but in this video I'll be trying to compare them directly. This is a daunting task, and one that won't please everybody. But I'm going to try anyway, because I'm awesome and because I've been disappointed by everybody else who has tried so far. Frame rates. Firstly, we need to test how quickly all of the different modes run. We can't just compare quality setting of DLSS against quality setting of FSR, because that on its own is meaningless, especially when they run at different frame rates and display different quality results. I don't know enough about FSR's implementations just yet, but I do know that Nvidia adjusts DLSS's base resolutions on a per game basis, which means in this instance we'll just have to benchmark each and every preset to see how they compare. At 4K maximum settings on a Ryzen 3 700X and GeForce 3080, I got these frame rates. But I'm not happy with this because it's evident that the game gets CPU bottlenecked at the higher performance settings. So I did it again at some ungodly resolution like 5760x3240, where it definitely was always GPU limited. And these were the results. I am confident to state that FSR's top quality setting runs slower than DLSS's top quality mode does in this game. But below that, the tables turn, and DLSS's frame rate relative to FSR's drops off the further you head towards the top performance settings. Now hold your pitch forks, this doesn't mean that one is better than the other, it just means that they could be running at different base resolutions. We'll need to know how good each of these modes looks before we can draw a conclusion from this. But what we can know already is, provided your system is GPU bottlenecked, any DLSS or FSR setting will deliver a massive performance boost over native resolution. But don't go too far with it. Don't assume that using the fastest performance or ultra performance upscaling settings will give you better frame rates. Even at 4K, I started running into CPU bottlenecks in some locations of this game. For instance, DLSS Ultra Performance sometimes didn't run any faster than DLSS Performance Mode did, nor did FSR Performance run any faster than its balance setting. But while they didn't run any faster in these spots, they still looked markedly worse. So don't go too far with the upscaling, and always be aware of whether your PC is CPU or GPU limited, because that will dictate the settings and resolution you should be gaming on. Visual Quality while DLSS and FSR both try to upscale the image, they go about it in different ways, and so their results are extremely different. Because they both operate from a lower resolution, however, there are some things that will look worse when either of them is enabled. In this example, you can see that the volumetric lighting operates at a lower resolution, which isn't a weakness of the upscaling, merely a symptom of their lower base resolution, and the way in which the game's engine operates. I also noticed decals fading out sooner at DLSS Ultra Performance Mode. Again, it's hard to blame DLSS here. I'm sure the decal fade-out distance could be adjusted by the developers if they noticed and cared enough about it. But beyond any effects constrained by the base resolution used, you'd be hard-pressed to see any visual differences between native 4K and the best quality presets of either DLSS or FSR. And unfortunately, this is normally how the technology is demonstrated. For everybody's sake, I'm going to take a look at the limitations of both technologies, if taken to the extreme, and if compared in similar situations. To do this, I drop the resolution down as low as I can, and then I turn the upscaling techniques up to their most extreme upscaling setting, because this really makes the inner workings of each method become more apparent. You won't game in this way, but if it's revealed that one method holds up better than the other at a super low resolution, 
then it's obviously managing to do more with fewer resources, and that sort of efficiency has uses elsewhere as well. So here's 720p native. I will be comparing this with 720p but with FSR's fastest performance setting activated, which I'll be using in order to push AMD's upscaling algorithm as far as it can go, in an effort to make the upscaling artifacts the most obvious. And I think you'll agree that FSR performance settings image is noticeably worse than the native one. A lot of the scene remains well anti-aliased, but texture definition has dropped off a cliff. I've noticed this in other games with FSR too. The upscaling betrays the original art style and looks almost like some kind of art filter that's been applied to the screen. The metal bars on this gate clearly highlight FSR's lower base resolution, as thin lines quickly dissolve into a blobby, jagged mess. There's a little bit of temporal flickering left behind the spinning fan blades, which suggests that this image is built up from at least several previous ones. Like I said earlier, in this game, FSR is applied to an image that has already had temporal anti-aliasing applied to it, so these telltale ghostly images that are left behind the spinning blades are from the temporal anti-aliasing and not directly from FSR. And lastly, and strangest of all, the top and left side of the screen appears to be stretched. I can imagine that a filter that upscales stuff based on what's around it would struggle to resolve details that are at the very edge of the screen, so this could be FSR's way of getting around this simply by stretching the artifacts to be off the screen slightly. It doesn't matter which setting of FSR you use, this is always present. Stuff also seems to get sucked off the right hand side of the screen, though the effect here is a lot more subtle than the abrupt line where it begins excessively stretching stuff on the left and top. You still won't notice this stuff unless you're looking for it, which I am. Now let's see how DLSS Ultra Performance fares against native. And DLSS truly shines at lower resolutions such as this one. You can see that, if anything, texture detail manages to be somehow higher than with native resolution. It retains the definition on the gates bars nicely, and there's no stretching going on around the sides of the screen. But DLSS's clarity comes at a cost, and that's to the image stability. It builds the image up over lots of frames, so you can see very noticeable ghosting behind the fan blades. I'm not even going to try counting these. It looks like it's holding on to details for a good 30 frames or so. When pushed to the limits like this, FSR and DLSS both introduce shimmering to the scene, but DLSS's is more obvious and a lot more aggressive in appearance. Everything with definition appears to crawl at a sub-pixel level. FSR's upscaling betrays the game's art style by making details blobbier and dithered looking, but DLSS's is likely to give itself away in the form of trails or motion blur behind movement and with aggressive shimmer on finer lines and details. I'm giving the win to DLSS though, as it reconstructs an image that far more closely resembles the native resolution. I've received criticism for focusing too heavily on still shots, so now I'll show a run through the first level, with FSR on the left and DLSS on the right. Both are using the fastest setting of upscaling available. Obviously, they're not the exact same run, but it should show you how the two upscaling methods hold up in fast-paced motion. At ultra-low pixel counts, I believe that DLSS remains the better option for resolving motion. It displays fine details from further away and retains more clarity on textures. If I'm honest, any checkboarding or pixel crawling present on the DLSS image is also present with FSR, and if anything, is even more noticeable with FSR when in motion. Let's take a look at FSR on its own, played at 25% speed. At super low resolutions, its art filter appearance is really noticeable, especially around the lights and on the wall behind them. It does a good job of hiding jaggies. So it does a good job of being an anti-aliasing method that also boosts frame rates. But the overall image quality is low. I do think that DLSS's image is significantly better, but around the edges of the lights you can make out the checkerboarding patterns that it has been unable to clean up, and the reflections on shiny surfaces tend to flicker a lot more than FSR does. Of course, it could be that at these settings, FSR is running at a lower base resolution than DLSS is, which isn't helped by the obscure naming schemes and secretive nature behind DLSS's base resolutions. I understand why AMD chose to name each of their FSR methods a tier above NVIDIA's, but while it is dank, it does make trying to compare them even more confusing. It's worth noting that, while both are clearly CPU limited at such a low resolution, if running at higher ones then FSR performance setting tends to run about 7% faster than DLSS Ultra Performance Mode does, so it's not a completely fair test here. Nothing would be because they all run at different speeds, but at least from doing this low resolution comparison you understand what the artifacts of both approaches look like. So let's move on to the final battle. I'm going to compare higher resolution examples which happen to run at similar frame rates. So here is 4K FSR quality versus 4K DLSS balanced mode. Still not completely fair, FSR runs 2-3% faster, so you'll just have to decide whether you think DLSS looks better and, if so, if it's worth the extra 2-3% performance penalty. 
The weaknesses of both methods are masked by a higher resolution, and both are, in my opinion, highly preferable to running at native resolution, when considering the performance penalty that that would entail. I'll be honest, at a higher resolution, with just a modest amount of upscaling going on, there isn't much difference between the two. I was really having to zoom in a nitpick to spot the differences. I still think that DLSS is better, but it's a lot closer than I had expected it to be. It's questionable if you'd even notice a difference between the two in practice. But I wonder if comparing similar frame rates is the wrong way to go about this. FSR and DLSS are similar if comparing their higher quality presets, but DLSS holds up better as it drops down towards performance or ultra performance preset, where it's having to upscale further from a lower base resolution. FSR's image quality drops off faster and the result looks more artificial. So if I was to extend this testing, I'd set FSR to something like quality or ultra quality, and then would see how low I could drop the DLSS setting before its image became noticeably worse than that. I suspect that if I tested in this way, DLSS would end up achieving similar image quality to FSR but at a higher frame rate. And if that's the case, then it's a shame that the Steam Deck will be limited to FSR, when I think that would be the perfect use case for DLSS, where we'd be able to achieve acceptable results while upscaling from a lower base resolution. But let's be clear here, both are great technologies. FSR acts as a powerful anti-aliasing solution, while DLSS imitates the clarity of a higher resolution but with more artefacts. But we've got to remember that the technology driving DLSS is more mature, and more work goes into implementing it into each and every game where it's supported. But FSR is still good, it's still a lot better than nothing, and as the resolution and frame rates increase, the differences become less noticeable. It still gives the impression of there being more detail than its base resolution would suggest, and it does a good job of anti-aliasing stuff. There was a time when anti-aliasing came with a severe performance penalty, but these days, thanks to FSR and DLSS, it can even come with a performance boost. And I commend FSR for being easy to implement into games and available for everybody to use. These factors will lead to it becoming more widely used than DLSS is. But now that DLSS is getting integrated into major game engines like Unity and Unreal, we probably will see a lot more games featuring DLSS in the future. And I don't know what's going to happen once Unreal 5 titles start shipping, since that has its own temporal super resolution upscaling method. We might end up with even more upscaling methods to choose from as time goes on. But for now, it's FSR versus DLSS. FSR is easier for current games to add, but where DLSS is featured, it is better. I find it annoying that Nvidia doesn't share this tech, while AMD does share theirs, so Nvidia users will always get the best of both worlds, while AMDs will have to make do with FSR. Luckily, the number of games in which this matters will always be limited to the very latest and most demanding titles, because as games get older, they become easier to run with current hardware, so eventually they reach a point where it's equally feasible just to ramp the resolution up and to get great anti-aliasing in them by super sampling everything the good old brute force way instead. So any strengths and weaknesses of FSR and DLSS are most important right now, and then will diminish in current titles as graphics cards get faster and as their prices go down. Hmm. But before we end, there is another reason for FSR to exist, and that's benchmarks. For a long time, DLSS was the only technology like it in existence, and people who benchmarked games faced a dilemma. It wouldn't be fair to benchmark AMD cards at native resolution versus Nvidia cards using DLSS, but if the feature is available then players will be using the games with DLSS enabled, so surely it would make more sense to run the games with DLSS enabled in benchmarks. Reviewers ended up doing the right thing, they'd compare native performance but then might slip in DLSS results as a bonus just to see how they compare. But now that FSR exists, and its mode seems similar in performance to DLSS's equivalents, if named a tier differently and with marginally faster performance which I think might be intentional, we could begin to see benchmarkers running games with FSR and DLSS on by default. There is no longer the fear of missing out on DLSS for anybody without an RTX card, because FSR is a decent alternative, if still not quite as effective when on balanced or performance settings. FSR's shortcomings remind me a lot of DLSS 1's weaknesses, but to a lesser extent. But perfecting these technologies takes time, so here's hoping that, with the groundwork now in place, FSR can continue to build on its promises, because we all stand to benefit. <laughs>